Hi, I'm Stefan. This is going to be part two of how to breed koi. Uh, in the first part, uh, we selected a really nice couple of koi. We put them in here, of course, male, female. Um, put them in here and last night, early morning, the action happened and uh, the spawning, uh, they did quite a big spawning. Um, so, the koi are back in the pond. I have to monitor them uh, closely the next few days. If they don't have any damage or some fungus on the, on the skin will develop because of the, yeah, the, the, the spawning. It's, it's, sometimes it goes a, a bit rough, so be, be careful and, and uh, yeah, check your koi in the few days after the spawning. Uh, also, when it happens, of course, in your pond, and you don't want to breed koi, but you, uh, after the spawning, check your water uh, parameters. The ammonia is really going up. Uh, stop feeding uh, and, and, and also monitor the skin of your koi. The brush is full of eggs. Um, I, I, normally, I put this in a, in a fiberglass tank or in a, yeah, in a, in a, a thousand liter tank. But uh, for the movie, it's nice to have it in a, a big aquarium. We've got an aquarium that's not heated. The heater is in, but it's not on. But it's quite warm. So I expect the, the eggs to hatch in about three to six days. Uh, I think three days when it's really warm uh, in here. So I have to, yeah, I have to put them in there. Here is a filtration system, a pump, a drain. All the eggs or all the new fish, the fry fish, will go into the drain, into the pump and yeah, will die. So I have to move them to the, to the aquarium. I like to do that because it's a bit of a distance. I like to do it in a, in a bowl with water. I have used the same water for the aquarium, not from this tank because the ammonia will be sky high now. But from the same main pond, I have uh, two tanks with the same water. Uh, and now I'm going to move the, the, the brush from here to the aquarium. So, the brush I will put in the water, in the aquarium. You have to make sure it's not all tangled up, so it's the, the eggs have space. If they're too close to each other, and there's not enough uh, water movement, uh, it, they will uh, get uh, um, uh, a fungus uh, and, and of course the, the fish will die. There will be some eggs that have maybe yeah, uh, mold, like uh, yeah, they have fungus. Uh, that's because they're not uh, fertilized. So don't worry about that. Uh, but if you have the air on, no pump on, because when the koi will hatch, and it's always, a, maybe it can be a, a day earlier than you expect, uh, when the pump is on, uh, all the new fish will be sucked in the system and they die. So I only have some, some air, uh, not too, too fast, not too, not too hard, just a bit. Uh, so there's some, some movement in the water and uh, you can put some FMC in, uh, not a normal dose, but uh, for a 300, uh, uh, so one gallon, uh, 300, 400 liters of uh, water, I use about 10 drops of, uh, of uh, FMC. Uh, you can use, we, we don't use it here, but it will keep the fungus away. Uh, that's it, now wait. If you want to, yeah, if it, it, it's already hot here, uh, the, the temperature of the tank is about six, uh, 26 degrees. Um, with the, uh, if it's a bit colder in your shed or whatever, you can of course put a heater in and then put it up to 24 is best. But it's here, it's really sunny, uh, it's uh, 26 degrees. Now I have to wait, I think in about three days we will see the first fish. Um, I don't rinse when the eggs are in, when uh, I start rinsing the water, uh, when the, 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 the fry fish came out of their eggs. And I will show you in the next part how to do that safely. But for now we have to wait.
So after exactly three days, we have the first fry fish floating, swimming around. If your koi or the eggs didn't hatch yet, don't worry. It can take up to eight, even 10 days. Depends on the temperature of the water. If the eggs are not uh, molded, if there are no fungus on outside, all please leave them and uh, be patient. And you, the next day, next morning, you will get some. You will see the first really tiny fry fish. So now it's really important not to feed your koi the fry fish. Um, what you will do is only pollute the water. Um, the ammonia goes up. You will get koi that have like the, the gill plates uh, flap out. Eh? When they're bigger, you will see those flaps going out. It's, uh, it's, uh, that can be one of the reasons if the, the ammonia level was too high when they're really young. So be careful with that. Um, so don't feed them. For the first four days, I don't feed them. They feed on their own uh, yeah, egg yolk. After those four days, uh, the, the fourth day, I start cooking uh, a chicken's egg uh, 10 to 12 minutes and then I take off the white and uh, I only leave the egg yolk. I take just a pinch of uh, uh, the egg yolk and I put it in the water. It's like dust, so it will, it will, um, yeah, it will be a bit cloudy, the water just a bit and uh, they will feed on the egg yolk for the, the next two days. After that, I can prepare other kinds of food for the koi. You can choose uh, for uh, living, eh, like atemia, uh, if they're not too big. Atemia, they will grow really fast on it. My uh, technique is to, to keep the, the, the tank, the water was already quite a long time in, the, the water that was originally in. So the, the sides are a bit algae, they like, like to yeah, eat from the algae or the, the amoeba on the algae. So they will eat from there as well. Uh, and then, yeah, after, after that, I will make a special, special kind of uh, fry mix. That will be in the next part. So please follow me on the next part for the how to feed your, how to get your fry fish really big.